here back again with a new road trip it's 2 am sun haven't peeps in yet but we are all set for the land of lord jagannath any guesses you are right this time we are going to explore odisha state known for its temples beaches and bounty of nature outside it is quite cold the first leg of this trip is 518 kilometers from kolkata to konarak together with udaygiri khandagiri lingaraj temple and dhauli shanti stupa we put on some good music to restrain our sleep car road trips actually at night hits different roads are deserted hence driving becomes easier miles are rolling away effortlessly after crossing dhulaga toll plaza the road is smoother with no traffic car is rolling on almost 100 kilometers per hour the rising moon along with good music makes me feel like i am flying we pass kharagpur by 4:15 am till then the driving was smooth after crossing debra toll suddenly nature throws a curve ball the illuminated roads suddenly become a spooky white abyss where only the shining moon can be seen fog lights even fail to penetrate car speed drop down to 40 km per hour this episode run till shonakania near west bengal odisha border after almost 3 and 1/2 hours drive we covered 195 km and now we are crossing the west bengal odisha border Here onwards the visibility develops and again we catch up our smooth drive. It is always better to start by night for long road trips that helps to revive energy and save time for the rest of the tour. 6 in the morning overcoming 217 kilometers with zero stop we reach Basta. Now it's 6 o'clock and we take here a coffee break. and it's a good idea to warm up our muscles a bit to have a flexible journey ahead in odisha there are stringent speed limits along with speed cameras also they introduce hefty penalty on over speeding speed limit is restricted to 80 km per hour on highways and for katak and bhubaneswar it is limited to 60 km This the first speed camera at Ruksha near 45 kilometers from border. So we are a bit cautious while driving still enjoying the journey. Road trip always offers its own surprising beauty while hitting different situation to handle endurance and adventure. I have been fortunate to see and experience some really incredible places over the years. The more I have traveled the more I have seen. We take a bio stop at Adirupa IUCL filling station Soro and fill fuel at rupees 104.57. After filling our belly a little we again start propelling through smooth broad boulevards along with few intermediate diversions. Road trip is one of the best ways to freshen the mind and enjoy every moments with nature. It is a best way to uplift the mood and capture the happiest moments into album of memories for future. I consider road trips as the best way to enjoy the vacation to the fullest. My husband is very fond of sweets. and willing to try gure rasgulla at pahala native pahala rasgulla is reminiscent of the oriya tradition indulgent taste and promising quality it's 11 o'clock and we hit pahala to have gure rasgulla let's enjoy the rasgulla over here
After having the delightful sweets, we move forward. Our first place of interest, Udoigiri Kondogiri Caves. After parking our vehicle, we snorted down the road and bent towards the caves. These twin hills, Udaigiri and Kondogiri, parched in the vicinity of Bhuvaneshwar town, represent the earliest rock cut architecture of Eastern India by Jainism. After purchasing the tickets for rupees 25 each, we start exploring. For foreigners, they charge rupees 300. Children below 15 is free. Though we are a bit exhausted due to our long night travel, but the eyeful charmer sight washed away all fatigueness. There are 33 rock cut caves on the both hills, out of which 18 caves are excavated on Udaigiri, while 15 are on Khandagiri. Generally, caves are single-storied, but a few of them are double-storied, and it is believed that the upper chambers were used for meditation. While Khandogiri means a broken hill, Udaigiri denotes the hill of sunrise. It is believed that these caves were built in 1st and 2nd century for Jain monks to provide them a place to rest and meditate. There are beautiful carvings basically from mythology and history. The road adjacent to the caves are full of various refreshments. Thereafter, we start for our next stop, Lingaraj Temple. Phones and cameras are not allowed inside the periphery, but from this viewpoint, one can enjoy the view. This Lingaraj temple is the oldest temple in Bhuvaneshwar dedicated to Lord Shiva as the name suggests. It is believed that the Linga over here, a manifestation of Lord Shiva, has appeared naturally. Which is 8 feet in diameter and 8 inches tall. This temple is a masterpiece of Kalinga architecture and has a 180 feet high tower. Next, we are heading for Dholigiri famous for the Buddha Shanti Stupa located at its top, built by the ardent followers of Buddhism to mark the conversion of great King Ashoka to Buddhism. At the base of the hill, we park the car and start climbing the race followed by few steps and here comes the mighty Dhavaleshwa temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. And on the other side is the stupendous Shanti Stupa. It was completed in two years and inaugurated on 8th November 1972. It has various rock edicts which are a living testimony of Emperor Ashoka's transformation. that witnesses the great Kalinga war. There are four massive statues of Gautam Buddha and his life is also found on the stone slabs. This beautiful dazzling white dome-shaped structure embellished with fascinating stone panels which are very eye-catching. This place also presents a bird's eye view of the entire area, lush green agricultural lands and the river Daya. At last, we depart for Yatri Nibash Konara. My wristwatch is showing 5.30 and we are entering in the Yatri Nibash compound, one of the best accommodation in the town. We choose to stay here in this beautiful large sprawling property of Konarak Yatri Nibash, just one kilometer from the Konarak Sun Temple Gate. The sun had still not awakened. I feel these waters are in deep sleep as my footprints were marked on the sand. The breeze of the wind carried moisture of the sea which caresses my body. Clean sands, roaring waters and cool breeze. This Chandrabhaga beach is a hidden gem for a tranquil escape, a picture perfect paradise for a photography enthusiast like me. Formerly, Chandrabhaka was considered a place of natural cure for lepers. Chandrabhaka beach on the coast of Konarak 
becomes India's first to get the blue flag certification. A tag given to environment-friendly clean beaches equipped with amenities of international standards for tourists. Our next and ultimate stop for this part of the trip is Konarak Sun Temple. Konarak Sun Temple is the pinnacle of Odisha and an UNESCO World Heritage Site. The temple is a culmination of 700 years of grind in search of perfection. Tickets can be purchased at Rs 40 for adults and below 15 years it's free but foreigners have to pay Rs 600. This magnificent sun temple is the apex of Orient temple architecture and one of the most stunning monuments of religious engineering in the world. Poet Rabindranath Tagore said that in Konarak Sun Temple, the language of stone surpasses the language of man. And it is true that the experience of Konarak is impossible to translate into words. The first rays of the sun fall on the temple's main entrance and it is interesting to know that the iconic wheel work as a sun dial. On the shores of the Bay of Bengal, bathed in the rays of the sun, this Konarak Sun Temple is a monumental representation of God Surya's chariot, famous for its architecture, beauty and various sculptures encurved here. These 12 stone curved wheels represent the 12 months of a year. This Konarak Sun Temple is famous for its unique architecture, geometrical patterns and curved wheels that serve three directions that uses the sun rays during dawn, noon and sunset. The massive structure sits in solitary splendor surrounded by drifting sand. Today it is located approximately 3 kilometers from the sea but originally the ocean came almost up to its base. In fact, the temple was enough close to the shore to be used as a navigational point by European sailors who referred it as the Black Pagoda. Its structure built here represents the passage of time. Each wheel here has eight spokes each representing a prahar which is a 3 hours period adding up to 24 hours which is a day. This temple is shaped in the form of a huge sun chariot that is drawn by 7 horses which represent 7 days of a week. At the entrance there are two lions at either sides of the entrance that are seen crushing an elephant each. Beneath each elephant is a human being. Here lion represents power and the elephant portrays wealth. The whole illustration symbolizes the major problems faced by man in his life, money and power. There are only a handful of temples in India dedicated to Lord Surya. Surprisingly, sun temples are not as popular as other temples in India. This sun temple of Konarak was built in the middle of 13th century by King Narasimha Deva I, the great ruler of Ganga dynasty, with the help of 1200 artisans within a period of 12 years. After Konarak sun temple visit, we back to Yatinibas get into the dining hall to have a mouthful breakfast. Thereafter, we headed for Chelika. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.